culture. Everything is permitted. Welcome to episode 90 of Everything is Permitted here at Wade's Comic Madness. I am your captain and host, Julian Brown, alongside my trusty co-hosts and cohorts, the Man of Steel, Matt Rappert, and the Master of Puns, Brittany Tomes. How we doing? Doing good. Doing great. It didn't snow. It's just <laughs> rain. <laughs> the snow is, in fact, melted. I accept this Most raining it, on yeah. my parade. Yes. <clears throat> yes. I'm just glad my next day off won't be just spent shoveling snow again. It was really getting to me. I was like not even streaming games because I was like, I am physically exhausted. I just want to sleep. <laughs> this is why I pay people to shovel my snow. Can't do you it. You pay me to shovel your snow because I'm already fucking out there shoveling. <laughs> no, it's okay. It would just go back to the podcast. Vocal tone snow removal. Yeah, right. <laughs> Voice acting and snow removal. No, like, I can shovel outside <laughs> doing different voices. <laughs> I'm giving her all she's got, Captain. Oh, oh boy. All right. Well, this week we have another fun show. We're near the end of uh, WandaVision as the penultimate episode has aired, and the stakes were obviously raised in a huge, major way. And that's uh, not a cow joke. <laughs> if they would have lifted Bova at any point in this series, I would have been like, the stakes Jeez. are raised. Oh, it's Brittany, bitch. I'm glad Bova didn't really appear because mm. <laughs> people would have been like, why is this cow talking? <laughs> anyway, uh, Brittany is obviously going to tell us all about what's going on because I think I'm even at Allegedly. a little bit of a loss at this point. Um, meanwhile, Snowpiercer chugs along with another setup episode. And finally, Matthew, it is the return of what, my friend? The Raiders of the Bargain Bin, although this one didn't kill me like it has in the past. No, it didn't kill I'm me glad. at all. I was hoping maybe it would be a palate cleanser. I didn't remember most of it because I saw it a long time ago, but I was like, I feel like, I was like, it's on Disney. So I was like, maybe everybody will be able to watch it. I've seen it literally in the bargain bin at Walmart before. So oh, no, like, I've, I've seen yeah. it there as well. I will say this. Karen did bring up when I told her that we were watching this movie for Bargain Bin that we do need to get back yes. to the actual bins of bargain. Yes. Yeah, now we can just go in and dig. Yeah, I mean, like, I got my shot. Like, I'll get my other soon. By the next bargain bin, I'll I'm, be fully vaccinated. Well, you gave me a link to sign up for my shot. There you go. AKA, when somebody bails or they can't make it, I can swoop in at the last minute and get the shot instead. Well, once, Boom. once you have your second shot, we're, we'll have a two out of three. So we'll have like a nice little plurality of vaccinations. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping I'm just secretly. That's herd immunity, immunity right? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much herd immunity, I think. Oh, man. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. But we are coming back with Raiders of the Bargain Bin. And this month, we chose the animated film. The Book of Life. The Book of Life. The Book of Life. Mijo. Yes. <laughs> Mijo. Mijo. Oh, Mijo. Manolo. Actually, uh, <laughs> I like well. do all the voices as hey, well. well. Mama, why are you down here? Yeah. Cholesterol. <laughs> I love that line. So good. Uh, before we get into our show, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, Brittany, how can people support it? Not surprised. I'm always the one who does it. <laughs> Not always. No, Matt's kidding. done it a few times If now. you want to support our show even more than just following us on social media, sharing our dank memes, and uh, giving us amazing five-star ratings, preferably. I'll even take a four. 4.5, maybe. 4.47. 4. Uh, <laughs> four. Depending on how it can be. Brittany makes too many puns. 4.5 out yeah. of 5. You're welcome. <laughs> like, Dude, you joke, but on our Star Trek podcast, we did have one person that's like, I could do with less puns. It's but true. But I love your show. Only one person ever said that. Everybody else is like, not enough puns this week. Yeah. I need to pick it up. You've been slacking. A I, I've just snap. been like more lax. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Trying to make sure we make time constraints. So I don't want to keep people laughing too long. So if you want to support us, possibly financially, if you're capable of doing that, we know it's a pandemic, but if you want to, you can head over to everythingispermitted.com, hit our drop down tab, and instead of clicking on our episodes that you definitely want to listen to nonstop, go down a little further, hit Patreon. It'll shoot you over to our Patreon page. There you can select two different tiers, $2 a month or $5 a month. Either way, you get access to a lot of awesome things. You get cool stickers. If you happen to be our five dollar tier you get upgraded to eip vip aka eat veep our faves um which means you get a shout out on our show and uh you also get access to our bonus pod content every month so like our awesome composer clash we did where we uh compared gustavo santalaya to halo dude whose name marty I'm mcdonald Jeez. marty mcfly yeah, yeah, marty mcdonald well i forgot disrespectful. i remember gustavo because he also did the music to book of life he did it's true um, so yeah, if if we aren't already 
holding your interest now. Sign up. Are you, we'll are really you not get your entertained? Interest. Yeah. Are you not entertained? We've got to add that to the board. <laughs> should. Yeah. Um, Matt, should I do the thanks or do you want to do the thanks? Up you, to you. You so. got it. All right. I'll, I'll hit the Thank thanks. Thank you this for week. being a patron. Oh, God. Yeah, like Billy Peets, Heather Reppert, Rob Migliaccio, that McCavity guy, Michael Cox, Nikki Vizi, Matt Moore, Cabria Wimbush, Rob Carter, and this program is brought to you by viewers like you and Kyle and Connor McClinton. Next time on Masterpiece Theater. (laughs) (laughs) Purely distinguished, mind you. (laughs) Every time, I don't know what day Masterpiece Theater was uh, when my grandmother was still alive, whichever day. I just always remember the viewers like you and the intro to Masterpiece Theater with like the skeletons and the gravestone because it was like a mystery and PBS is I like when (gasps) PBS is just like, this program is brought to you by viewers like you. And it's like right after I watched Power Rangers. So I was just like, I did this. I'm a viewer like like me. Next up, Wishbone. And I was just like, yes, I did this. You're welcome, Wishbone. Wishbone. (laughs) I love Wishbone. (laughs) I was like, look at this little dude running around dressed as Robin Hood. What the fuck do you think you're doing? Proven or not, that dog is dead, though. (laughs) 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 I meet a genie and he's like, you have three wishes. And I was like, one of them is Wishbone. Mm. Bring it back. Oh, hey Matt! If uh, if people can't support the show via Patreon, how can they also go about doing so? Well, Brittany already kind of covered that, but we'll cover it. Again. Do it anyway. <laughs> Do it anyway <laughs> by going to wherever you listen to. Everything is permitted, and give us a five star review, maybe even a four star, should you so desire. A thumbs up, a like, a subscribe, something that shows you care because we love you. You can also play our episodes for your pets if they're alone at home. If you, you leave to go to work, if you're an essential worker, I do if you, this. If, if you, I play it on YouTube so they hear my voice. If you feel like it. if you feel like your dog needs to hear us talk about Palpatine sex, then by all <laughs> means, put it on. Palpatine <laughs> Yes. Yes, cool. Feel your anger. I can feel something swelling, all right. <laughs> Padme, <laughs> where are you with my wine? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh man! This uh, wine I still cry is I not that. red enough. Anakin once floated a pear over to you. <laughs> actually, I can float something. Quick, quick aside. Speaking of wine, by the way, I there's a robot chicken skit that they actually got Sam Elliott to voice, and it's just oh, like, nice. and he literally just goes, "White wine, fuck yeah!" <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, uh, rants and raves, folks. Who's got something this week? Um, okay, I'll go. I got two raves. Uh, so I have heard about it from people who have watched it. And so I watched the first episode and a good chunk of the second, but I started watching resident alien Mm. on sci-fi with Alan Tudyk. Mm -hmm. And oh my God, Alan Tudyk is a goddamn national treasure because I already love Alan Tudyk, but the show made me like love the man even more because the show showcases his ability to just like completely act like a total weirdo but be (laughs) lovable at the same time because for those of you don't know it's a show about an alien that comes to earth and he basically kills this doctor who only and it's this remote town in colorado of like maybe like seven thousand people i think they say and he kills this doctor who kind of lives alone by himself and who spends like four months out of the year at this little cabin and he takes his form and the town doctor ends up dying and is murdered and it's funny he learns how to speak english by watching law and order so at one point he goes like at the end of the first episode he's just like because he was murdered he goes dun dun (laughs) (laughs) then he does it like several times throughout the episode and everybody's like what the fuck is wrong with this guy and they think he's just this brilliant doctor but obviously he's an alien but he thinks he's like he's superior to all of humanity but the thing is he's like i know how to be a doctor i my species like conquered interstellar traveler and he's like all i have need is the internet and he's like he does an inspection and just like where's this wart i need to remove it's like oh no this is a pelvic exam he's like oh no so he's like under the hood he's got the phone he's like trying to look up what to do it's funny as hell you need to watch it i'd i would recommend it i was gonna say i was really excited for that show i still haven't watched it yet but it's like there's a comic resident alien and they were like yeah, oh, we're it, making it, it into it a show. Ba- it is based on a comic yes but i heard that people that read the comic were like this is nothing like the comic but it's still really fun and i'm like <laughs> okay so yeah i need to watch it is it on sci-fi or something yes I yes it's so. on sci-fi yeah. i literally like kept sharing the trailer to it and then it finally came out and i just like missed whatever day it came out amazing that sci-fi is doing sci-fi wouldn't you know well hey. no it'll be amazing if hey. they don't like cancel it after like a season and be like oh what what a hit show it's great is it and on now- fridays 
I don't. I, I I've been buying each individual episode. I just bought like the first four episodes on Vudu, and nice. so that's how I've been able. To if watch it's on them. Friday, it's guaranteed to I get canceled on the first con- season. Hold on, I was gonna say. I think since Continuum, they've let things go for multiple seasons, but they do eventually cancel. Yeah, like yeah. the Magicians after five. But well, it's that, okay, I only that won at in least five. that at least I I like kind of ran its course. Yeah, so. I was like, I only won five seasons. For yeah, me, but. and I will also rave. I know you and I briefly talked about it, but. I love pretty much all the stuff Bungie announced about Destiny, what they're doing, the cross play, even even delaying Season of the Witch. I'm okay with that because they basically announced they're massively expanding their programmers and de- and developers and stuff like that. So I think the expansion is going to be massive. Like it's not going to be because originally they said it won't be as big as Forsaken. I think they're going to go. It'll be bigger than Forsaken now. Plus all the, all the other goodies, getting rid of sunsetting. Oh my god, I can't tell you how goddamn happy that makes me and pretty much almost the entire community. Yeah, sunsetting being gone is, I think, some of the best news that came out of this. It shouldn't have ever happened in the first place. I still don't agree that vaulting should have even happened. Like they got to find a way to keep content in the game without these massive file sizes. But that's a story for another day. Yeah. My biggest takeaway, and I obviously told you about it before the episode started, that I am stoked that you and I can finally be able to play together in like two months. So season, we're in season 13, season 15 crossplay is coming, and maybe I won't be so bitchy about the game anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm stoked. Um, I think you and I have said it. Like, we're both really excited for Season of the Witch mm-hmm. because it's the whole culmination of Savathun. And- it just makes me think of Halloween 3. <laughs> <laughs> Which has nothing to do with Michael Myers. Just because it, it's yeah. more day, so Halloween, Halloween, yeah. Halloween, Halloween. I ask you a question. So, yeah, it, there's a lot of good news coming out of there. Yeah, yeah, I was very happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You kind of stole my rave because <laughs> I was gonna, <laughs> ah, I was gonna be like, well, I ranted about it last week, so maybe I should rave about <laughs> well, you it. Can, you can the continue iconic the rave. Tale. Um, I don't know how much more there is to say about it, other than like I'm always in a very like love hate place with destiny but it finally seems like they they make a lot of minor changes throughout the seasons yeah. and and fans are always then complaining well it's like they're not really listening to us blah 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 it seems like this time they have straight up listened to every single complaint that the destiny community has put up because they're fixing stasis in pvp which has been a mess they're doubling their cheating uh, yep they're, like yep. they're doubling that to catch cheaters and yep. such which i hope they go through with because like, i know on pc cheating's like an epidemic in destiny and it's the same thing in warzone that's why I, I, mm. I have crossplay turned off on warzone because there's just no point to play it um otherwise yeah so yeah no it's exciting and uh we'll we'll see where it goes my my other quick rave is that karen and i late last night started watching very late to the game uh, Amazon Prime's Jack Ryan show, and the first episode was very, very good. So, I heard, I heard it's a good show, yeah. but it's, but it's, it kind of went under the radar for yeah. a lot of, and it's like what, like two or three seasons. Dude, in? I think they're going into season three. Yeah. yeah. So I really liked it. It's my, like I love political thrillers. Uh, you know, like Homeland was one of my favorite shows of all time. I still, so. I still, I'm trying to get because I want Heather to watch it with me because I've heard nothing. I want to watch the boys on Amazon oh, yeah. Prime. And, the damn yeah. boys. Yeah. <laughs> I watched some of that with my brother yeah. and sister-in-law. So, um, anyway, not really a big rave today, but go to the Brit. I have two little raves. Thanks, um, John Lennon. <laughs> yeah, right. The first one is called Paperback Writer. Um, <laughs> uh, it's not. Anyway, I watched The Wilds, which is on Amazon Prime Video, and I was like pleasantly surprised by it. I'd been meaning to watch it for a while because the premise is basically like Lord of the Flies, but it's like girls trapped on an island after you know their plane crashes or whatever so i was like okay like i'll take it with a grain of salt or whatever but it's like a really good blend of like drama and comedy and yeah i was like pleasantly surprised by it i actually watched it all in like a day because there were only like 10 episodes and they're like an hour each i was like mm, this is gonna be my entire day off <laughs> and it was a good day off i really enjoyed it and now i'm like hyped for a season two nice i won't say anything like was shocking i was like waiting for them to figure things out it was just like plot twist yeah like, figure it out what's the symbolism like, of the polar bear so smart <laughs> There's no polar bear. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I really enjoyed it. So that was cool. And then this week I learned uh, about TikTok lesbians and I was like, that's where we all are? We I, all went to TikTok? I literally so I can't find you. <laughs> oh my so it's funny. It's funny you met because I have been watching a bunch of lesbian TikTok videos for the past few weeks and I thought about posting them in the chat, but I'm like, no, Brittany probably already knows about this. Well, I'm that's not the gonna thing. like Cabrera would sometimes send me TikToks and stuff and like occasionally like some are like gay jokes and she's like, Hey, you'll get this. But like 
I just, I've never had, like, I didn't have a TikTok. Like, I watched Vine when it was a thing, but I also yeah. didn't have a Vine. So I was yeah, just yeah. like, yeah, like, they're funny videos, whatever. But, like, the world was like, TikTok lesbians. And I was like, <laughs> these are just the same gay jokes I make all the time. And I get to make skits. I love skits. So I was just like, why did nobody tell me? It, like, I'm your friendly neighborhood lesbian. You should have been like, why don't you have a TikTok, bro? I don't have a TikTok, so I know nothing about this, and I'm still very, very I don't, hesitant I don't, I, to download it. I don't have a TikTok. It. I just, like, they put, like, like a whole clips of them on Facebook yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, That's yeah how like I compilations. See yeah. But, like, it's what I used to do with Snapchat before Snapchat became all, like, the filters and stuff. Like, back when you used to just, like, draw on it mm. and then also just, like, write words. Because I used to make some really fucking funny videos when I'd be at, like, my one job all day. Like, for an eight-hour shift, and I'd be there at, like, night, and, like, nobody was coming in, so I'd just be like, okay, I'm just gonna make weird videos. So I'm like, I want to go back and find these Snapchats and, like, recreate some of them, because they were fucking gold. And I was like, and I could be top-tier lesbian TikTok. I just got a joke <laughs> about being gay, which I already do 24-7. There Easy. you go. <laughs> I like it. Kids these days talking about a thirst trap, I might literally trap a water bottle <laughs> and be like, this, you're, you're that thirsty? This is your thirst trap. Boom. Capture it. <clears throat> Top Jesus. tier. Peak Brittany's going to be a celebrity in a week. Maybe. Love it. I've only made three so far. One was just about my cat being cute because I went, boo and then she was like, Burr. and like woke up. <laughs> you can't go you wrong can't hear it, cats. but it's so cute. Nice. That's my my raves. It's a good good day to be gay. I love it. There was gay shit in the wilds too. Watch it. Today was a good day. I got to be say gay. it was a good, good gay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, boy. All right, guys. If that is all, is it time for... The minute that is permitted. Oh, <laughs> curveball. <laughs> We're going distinguished now. Yes, it's the most are. permitted oh, minute you'll, you'll ever see. Oh. It's my news. <laughs> my news of the how, day. How gauche. <laughs> <laughs> 60 seconds to get it right. That's what we're doing. It's <laughs> You'll the, get it. It's 60 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> it's the permitted minute, and we are going to go here in five, four, three, two, one. Mr. Gata, start the clock. It was announced this week on the heels of Superman and Lois that a, uh, a, 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 that a, what the hell? A reboot film for Man of Steel is in the works produced by J.J. Abrams. Even more exciting, the script will be written by the amazing Ta-Nehisi Coates. Remakes for both Pokemon Diamond and Pearl are in the works. An open world game, Legends Arceus, is also slated for 2022. We finally got the name for the third film in the Spider-Man Homecoming trilogy, titled No Way Home. Home Slice, Home Wrecker, and Phone Home were also considered. The final runtime for the Snyder Cut is locked. Four hours and two minutes to either be impressed or highly disappointed. I'm going to say the second. Mm, shocking to no one, Daisy Ridley confirmed in a conversation with USA Today writer Sarah, Saraya Wilson that Ray was no one right up until Rise of Skywalker. Wait, wait. What is Rise of Skywalker? Tell me if you've heard this before. A sequel to District 9 is finally in the works. Why does this movie even need one? How dare you for writing that? In its recent Investor's Day presentation, Viacom CBS announced that the upcoming Halo TV series will move from Showtime to Paramount+. Plus. We did it. Yeah, yeah. You, Brittany, Brittany sorry, stumbled dude, out the gate. Well, because there's a capital A, and I was thinking like it means like A, like like A. <laughs> that was like auto, title a. auto correct. I know, but it just really stupid. threw me off. I was like, how can I, why can I not read this? I was like, what is going on? But then I realized it's just. A reboot film. Madam must, so that's Madam like must the worst mistake I've ever done. But and I, was I, like, I also wasn't, I think this might have thrown you off. I wasn't referring to the movie Man of Steel. I was calling Superman the Man of Steel because I didn't want to say Superman twice in the sentence. <laughs> Super Superman. Yeah. It Superman. just all fucked me up. Superman, <laughs> Superman, Man of Steel. Because <laughs> like, I was just thinking it was like, you know how they're like triple A title games or whatever. I was like, it was just a big A. So I was like, A reboot. I was like trying to figure out why, why, is, I was like, why is there a capital I think a? of big A's, I could only think of Apocalypse. I mean, kind of. Yeah. But it just, it threw me off because I was like, what are we rating here? Like, was, Not the DC apocalypse. The proper apocalypse. The apocalypse. Marvel's apocalypse. Uh, Read these apocalypse, girl. Not the movie apocalypse. You don't even want to see comic, my dark side. The comic and animated series Not the movie Apocalypto. No, not that. <laughs> directed by and Mel Gibson. Apocalypse Now. This <laughs> no. is Apocalypse Then. Indeed. Six Maybe degree, apocalypse later. Six, six degrees of apocalypse going on in here. Mm, indeed. Uh, indeed. I'm disappointed in myself. Well, don't be disappointed for too long because it's time to talk about WandaVision episode eight, wow. previously on. Which continues to not disappoint. Which, yes, very much continues not to disappoint. Previously and, on X-Men. I love that they call this previously on. And before you go, I just have to state, I don't know if this was purposeful and I may have just been looking way too much into it. But I feel like this episode was a giant fuck you to a lot of the bad nine like nineties tropes of 
oh, we ran out of budget for our season finale. We have to do a clip show from our previous seasons. And this was like technically a clip show episode, but it was all new footage that we'd never seen before. I don't know. I, that's immediately like I go back to the TNG season two finale where like Riker gets an infection and it's just like everything yeah. that's happened in the past two <laughs> things. It's always show- an episode called like memories or yeah. something where it's always like a flashback. Yeah. And I was just like, oh. They're making fun of this. And maybe they weren't, but I, I That got happened it. in the episode of Legend of Korra in the last season. They, like, wouldn't give them the budget for, like, that episode. So they're like, well, it's going to be a flashback one. And it's, like, literally called, like, Memories or something. <laughs> and I was like, ah. And you get, like, one or two new scenes in it. Mm. Memory. It was, like, the Memory. penultimate episode, too, or something. Oh, like, that's made, shite. Or it was, like, the last, that's it was shitty. in the last, like, three. So you're, like, this epic, it, you have this epic finale, and then, like, two episodes before, you have, like, a flashback episode. Because they're, like... <laughs> Yeah, Nickelodeon won't give us the budget to do we need his to, art. We need to know how we got here. Now look That's at them. They got their own studio. Mm, oh. I am excited Yo. about that. Brittany, why don't you uh, take on. us down? Take us I was going to say, oh. can I not start first? Because I like to hear you guys say stuff, and then I can bring up the rear with like, blah, 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 blah. Because I feel like I always go first, and then I kind of like say a bunch, and then I ruin it for you guys, and then you don't bring up the stuff you want to bring up. I don't agree with that, but I'll just say the the one thing that I absolutely loved about this episode was the very beginning when Agatha's like, oh, it's really interesting to reveal our true selves. I'm surprised they didn't realize it sooner. And and Wanda goes, who are you? And Agatha's like, oh, honey, that accent really comes and goes, doesn't it? I was like, meta, meta, <laughs> love it. Oh, I loved that. I also really, I don't usually like flashback stuff, but I like that the preview of the pre, like the actual, not the name of the episode previously on, but the actual previously on showed Infinity War because it was really important to this episode. And I like getting to go back to Sokovia and I like getting to go back to when she was with Hydra. I, I mean, I didn't get spoiled for the episode, but the only thing that I saw on Twitter after the episode was people um, saying how much it meant to them when Vision says, "What what is grief uh, if not love enduring? Love persevering. Love yeah. per- persevering, thank you. And I was just like, that whole scene, I swear to God, they better get nominated next year for Emmys because it was beautiful and very well acted. I like the Scarlet Witch getting her name finally the way it happened, it was the, the line me it's, felt it, a it little was, forced. It was a little forced, yeah. But I still I accept it and I liked it. But it was the the line was delivered not exactly the best way. Um, I also am happy that the show, even though that's what I thought it was initially, didn't actually go down the necromancy route, <laughs> and that it wasn't necromancy because that would have been some. Really... I was going to say the one the only downside is that the one thing Julian was right about he was wrong about. Right, <laughs> right? I, know. I was like, this is such a betrayal. <laughs> it, it's a little bit of a betrayal, but also at the same time, I'm like, to be fair, the show fed us that. So, and at the same time. Mm-hmm. The necromancy is still happening with what we saw at the end of the episode. <laughs> You're going to tell me all about that. It's fine. I'll yeah, get to it. Yeah. <laughs> if anything, technomancy. But technomancy, it's not, it's not, not necromancy. Fair enough. It's just a, a husk. So. A husk. Indeed. Um, anyway, I really liked this episode. I thought the flashbacks were really all done. And I kept on thinking about you watching the episode, me? how you uh, kept saying to us throughout the season that Agatha isn't necessarily a villain, but someone who's trying to help she does both. Wanda. She helps and hurts, but yeah. she does things for her. Yeah. And this episode sold it. I was like, this is the perfect fucking Agatha Harkness. Yeah. And I'll get into that, but it felt so good. This was a good episode. It was yeah. traumatic, but I, I liked the episode. It had a couple things I I could nit I nitpicked a little bit while watching it. Like I because especially after what happened at the end of the previous episode with you know, with Pietro oh, and yeah, such yeah. and all that, because I was kind of like, what what Pietro. happened with the two of them? You know, at yeah, the- that's the one thing I didn't like that they added was that post credit scene. But I feel like the only reason they threw it in is because they knew the following episode she wasn't going to pop up at all, so they had to have like a reason why she wasn't immediately showing up to like Wanda's aid. Mm-hmm. That made any sense. Yeah, yeah. continue. But yeah, uh, overall, I dug the episode. I did. Uh, another thing that I kind of nitpicked is that the whole thing with Sokovia is all right you know obviously they establish why she has this connection to these old time tv shows you know the the dvds or vhs's or whatnot of you know i love lucy and blah blah blah. pretty much all the shows that we obviously that everybody kind of knows they were basing the show the earlier episodes on but the thing that i seriously was kind of like wait a minute is because they're looking outside and there seems like a goddamn civil war going on and i'm just like i 
they're they're just gonna like sit inside watch movies when there's like violent that's, armed oh, that's conflict. Pretty that's pretty normal, though. What you have to do that's in those what movies. happened when in these war torn countries, especially in like the Middle East, and stuff. People just go about their lives every day, you know. Yeah, but here, but so speaking as someone who has been in a war torn uh, country, fair. like when there's an active firefight going on on site, I don't see people like inside their TVs when we're like well, yeah. when we're like running past their house, like oh, what are they watching they're, in like, there? Huddled. Okay, great. Okay. Like, yeah. oh, like, no, they're huddled. They're terrified. But I think if there had been something where, you know, maybe it seemed like it was idyllic or something like that, where you didn't know it was happening and then boom, like something I would have been like, all right, that's a little more believable to me. But and I understand they're trying to do the whole like, oh, they're trying to like act like nothing's wrong. But most human people like know that something terrible is happening outside and they're trying to protect everybody and i'm sure they know that and i'm sure that as they're sitting on that couch watching that tv they're probably also just completely in shock and fearing for their lives but the way i see that too is that this is something that they're probably used to seeing day in and day out fighting and fire on the streets it's happening every single day I the way I looked at this was no one was ever expecting an actual bomb to drop on their house. The way I looked at this was Tony Stark had probably just made a deal with whoever was bombing Sokovia and sold his weapons to them, and that's why these big bombs finally got dropped. Like this was just a an in, like constant little engagements that were happening until they got the big guns, which were Stark's bombs, and boom. Also, what was going on with? Uh at the beginning with the whole Salem and the Coven of Witches. And I like, have, I can explain. The power! Okay. This is the one part where I was, it was one of those moments where I was like, okay, I'll allow it. I was really excited when the episode opens up and it's obviously they're in Salem during the witch trials. Yeah. And I was like, oh man, they're going to go there. Because Agatha, like I mentioned before, earlier on, that she's been around since before the Salem Witch Trials, like she was there when it happened. But what they didn't mention in the episode, which I guess they steer away from because it's, it's tra they're trying to make the show for everybody or whatever, as weird and deep as it is. Um, they put her on the stake and were trying her because she stole magic from them and mm -hmm. she was pursuing dark magic. Which is fine and all, but that's not the actual reason anybody had problems with her during the Salem Witch Trials. It's because she betrayed her coven in the way that when the Salem witch trials were happening and people were just going around grabbing any women and, you know, saying like, oh, burn her, she's a witch. She was okay with the Salem witch trials and even promoted it because it would call the weak from her coven. Mm. And that's why the coven was like, what the fuck? You were literally actively helping them kill us. Or if somebody is up about to be burned alive and you know they're a witch, you're not going in to help them. Because she was just like, okay, well, we need to get more powerful and not all of us can live up to those standards so, like, the weak can be killed. But they didn't even touch on that. And I was like, ah, no, you had the perfect chance to say, like, you betrayed your coven. You could have listed that as one of the reasons to be like, literally, there's witch trials going on and you're allowing well, the, them to they did, I think they did say, like, you betrayed your coven. She so did, the they, mother they, says yeah. you betrayed your coven. But, so they yeah. could have, they could still have, no, they just like, didn't want to do the whole explanation. She of, said you betrayed your coven, but then she said you stole magic from us and you're pursuing, like, it was all in the same, like, line. She wasn't implying anything else. I, I think, I think they could, for interpretation. I think they could hand wave Ow! it. Like, <laughs> but, oh, but the thing is, is that, it's like, important character you know, when they're doing the whole, like, I don't know if they're trying to, like, drain her energy or what they're doing to her yeah. when she's on the stake, but then... Like it, it alters and becomes like the more purple magic that she has, and I was kind of like, "What is happening right now?" I, I wasn't like, I'm since I'm not like a comic, since okay. I'm not into the comics, I'm kind of like, I don't, I mean, I don't know if they'll do like a more of an of an explanation in the, the last episode as to what that was. I think that's just they're showing the audience that she is, has more powerful magic, like Wanda, both innately and the fact that she was studying without them mm -hmm. being aware of it at first. These darker magics so <laughs> it's like that's why hers started to come out as purple um it was like manifesting that way so they kept thinking they could drain her but really like good luck draining someone who's more powerful than you they're gonna drain you instead and that's what happened and it's also like it ties into that whole shark thing where it's like the kid couldn't access the magic and was slowly dying and the shark is like well i get to eat that magic like that sort of thing so it like all it's like it's almost like she's powerful with magic but also she has a capability of being like a parasite. Mm -hmm. Like there's so many magical beings that are like that. They're powerful on their own, but also they see other magic users who are weaker than them as potential like batteries almost. So it's exciting. <laughs> but I also, I really liked that scene. And you mentioned like the de-aging was really good in that part. It's some of the, yeah. I, I didn't, I, I don't know why I forgot to mention now. It is, I think the best de-aging I've seen. Now I get why 
because Catherine Hahn is still young and they probably yeah. don't need they to just do some of the that and like, much mm-hmm. to do it. Having said that, it's still like a craft to make it look that good. Not witchcraft. a witchcraft joke. I was waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you think she has hex appeal? I mean, I part of me kind of wishes. <laughs> part of me kind of wishes that maybe they'd gone with a like maybe make her a much younger character in that scene because. Like Catherine Hahn is forty seven, and I, I I understand like the de aging and everything. But part of me was like, I, I, I thought I, it looked I, really good. Mm, I, di- I didn't quite buy it, honestly. I think it showed that she doesn't age the same way that mortals do. Because I was just like, oh yeah, she saw Atlantis sink. She was little around for their witch trials, and she only looked like what 10, 20 years younger. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like here she is in her forties, flaunting it. Finally got to see the full outfit. Thank God. That was cool. <laughs> I was waiting for it. I was like, look at these purple wispies. Now, that, speaking... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was about to say, that scene with the, the, the name finally being... I, I did feel I was a little bit forced, but... Yeah. Do you like how she just, like, was choking the kids? Yeah, right? Um, it's like, just move backwards. <laughs> I really loved the scene where she gets in touch with the Mind Stone, and it shows... Like, the Mind Stone shows her her future, and someone on the internet very... Very good of you. Enhance that image, and it showed what we're probably going to see in the finale. Wanda's full new comic accurate superhero outfit, and I'm very excited. Like they enhanced <laughs> it. It's the one that's been in the posters that they've been teasing, yeah. and the full helmet. And I'm like, I can't wait. <laughs> it's that. I just want to see the helmet. Yeah, I want to see the helmet. Yeah, that, but more high. But tech. more, you know, 2021. <sighs> so for the audience who doesn't know, I have this book with me because. Throughout, before WandaVision came out and also while it was coming out, my coworker and I were always discussing like what potentially could be in the show and wanted to have certain comics aside to do like, you know, auction sets of them or make sure we at least had them together if people were like, can I buy this run? Or if, you know, comics just fucking skyrocket in price, even if people get a whiff of something, they're like, wait, there's going to be a Black Adam movie? Now all of a sudden, he's not actually, people still aren't buying Black Adam, but this is your heads up to do it now. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Same with Warlock. His name was dropped in Guardians of the Galaxy. They haven't done shit with it. But, oh, my God, we still have, like, Adam Warlock stuff that's going to be, like, worth hundreds of dollars. So, like, please buy it now. Anyway, one of the things we talked about was the West Coast Avengers run. Like, some people, they like certain aspects of it because John Byrne worked on it, and, like, it's cool. Um, There's only, like, three major things that ever happen in, like, West Coast Avengers. And, like, the one that we thought about was, like, Vision Quest because this is the one where Vision gets destroyed. They have his body laid out in a lab table. Wanda orders, like, Hank Pym and other people to put him back together. Vision comes back. But uh, as they showed in the show where she, like, puts her hand on his head and she's like, I don't feel you, though. Like, you're not really here. And she, like, walks away. Um, In the end of this episode, they have White Vision appear, which they used some of Wanda's magic that's randomly still on that drone. Okay, (laughs) sure. Um, To power him up. And they have just, like, the husk, the lifeless husk of his body. And when he like comes back to life if you notice he's like completely pale because he's white vision that happens in this comic series specifically vision quest which is like eight issues so first i have this page open this is the one that i talked about like four or five episodes when they did that initial scene where they showed that oh wanda came in broke in and stole his body he was like laid out on the table and i mentioned to you guys i was like that was like straight from the comics because like she she does that she breaks in finds his body splayed out almost in the same position this is a little more like really broken yeah. down whereas he's like you know arms and legs and stuff um but i was like oh that was neat that was cool that they did that callback because the mcu is notorious for like all the people that work in the mcu say we pull things from specific storylines but we're never going to do a specific story verbatim like, yes we won't do it that's just not what we're going to do that's why civil war didn't look exactly the same that's why Nothing the scrolls like are the not comments. bad yeah. it's like a whole thing so anyway i just thought that was the only illusion maybe they'd do and i was like oh okay i could see but they already quote brought vision back and he wasn't white vision so i was like oh it could still happen but we'll see anyway so there you go you got vision popping up i'm like flipping through this book audience if you're listening um i'm just trying to look for specific scenes anyway um this book west coast avengers like wasn't good (laughs) so a lot of people have these and then eventually would just trade them in um but anyway so here you go this is west uh i almost said westview this is white vision as he appears because when they bring him back to life he doesn't have like the emotional part that makes vision a thing um, and he forgets everything about their life. Like he forgets their marriage, their kids, like all the love and emotion that was behind their relationship. So he's like not the same person. And Wanda goes off the deep end. This is when she starts doing her like dark Scarlet Witch stuff, um, which I'm moving too fast for this book. So I got to flip to it. 
Okay, but here you go. See? So, like, she cares, kisses him. He's like, Vision, wait. Be careful, my love, or whatever. And he's just like, yeah, of course, I'll be fine. But, like, he doesn't have that emotional right. depth to him. She starts to lose her shit, starts to go dark, and then you basically have altercations with, like, White Vision, which I think is the fallout after this story event happens. So, here's a question. Are they going to have either... The, so obviously this episode revealed that she created the vision not it's not his body that you know she's controlling like a puppet or whatever like that yeah it's is, like an illusion a major illusion well done, basically but is it go are they going to do something where either this vision merges with white vision or white vision you know becomes the vision that that everybody knows and blah 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 i don't think it's an illusion especially after what we saw in in the in the I guess the chamber with Hydra Wanda's magic is always in the MCU. And I don't know if it is in the comics as much. I'm not as familiar with the character in, in the comics has always been connected to the mind stone. This episode at least showed me and I could be theorizing too much on it, that she is somehow connected to the actual mind stone now, because that wasn't red magic making making vision yeah, was that other. was the mind stone making vision it was yellow they didn't do that for no reason i know that and and vision when he comes out of things and redoes his body it's yellow mm -hmm. i'm gonna probably be wrong and i'm wrong a lot but i think this is a real vision somehow i'm going to wrap around and say as stated on a previous episode of our show I mentioned that Wanda and Vision are linked to the Mind Stone, like both in comics yes. and the TV show. So that's a thing. They're always inherently going to have that sort of magic. Um, the Mind Stone is not what brings about her powers, at least. I don't know if the MCU is going to try and make that seem like it's a thing or not. But that's not how she gets her powers in the comics, which I'll get to later when we talk about chaos magic. But that being said, the Vision that she's creating is the truer form of vision because it's the vision that she knows innately, that emotional, the intellectual. So it's like she has the mind and spirit, whereas the quote bad guys or government organization of just fucking idiots has um, the physical have like yeah. his physical husk. But that's the thing. He was always an Android that they made. And then it wasn't until the mind stone and Jarvis, all these personalities and different aspects came together to actually give him that sort of like life and make him an actual sentient being. So could this then go around to what Matt is saying, where maybe we see in the finale, even though they said it's going to maybe be a bit depressing, mm -hmm. the merging of basically the soul of, of, of vision that Wanda has created through the mind stone going in back into the husk. It's hard because, like, I don't want to say what I think the MCU is going to do. They could very easily just have him never come back to life. But yeah. it's like what we discussed before the show even came out. Either the show is going to have Vision come back to life in his full everything, or he's going to be dead forever and Wanda finally has to cope with it. That being said, in the comics, he obviously does come back. Yes. But those are like, comics. But, like, everybody always yeah, comes no, but back. But <laughs> what I'm saying is they're not, they said they're not exactly following the story. Yeah. So I'm telling everybody, like, yeah, pick this up. Like, I've read it before. It's cool. But once again, this isn't the most amazing storyline that's ever happened. I'm um, going to make it easy on people. If you want, right now, we're going to give this away. Ooh. We are going to give away West Coast Avengers Vision Quest. The trade paperback. Do we do... Which collects the full uh, numbers 42 through 50, which is the whole uh, yeah. Vision Quest storyline. Boom. So I'm putting you on the spot, Brittany, but do you have a trivia question that people could answer and look up to oh, win yeah, this? <laughs> oh, Okay. So we haven't gotten to the question yet, and now I know I won't say the name when I get there. But in the comics, Wanda is a mutant. Yes. So we know that around puberty is when their powers develop. Wanda, when she was born, came into contact with the Chaos God. And that's why when her magic later developed, it's known as Chaos Magic. What is the name of that Chaos God? It's a single name. If you email that to us at permittedpod at gmail.com. If you're the among those selected, or maybe you're the first one who sends it to us, you will win this trade paperback of Avengers, uh, West Coast Avengers Vision Quest. Yep, that's it. Simple and easy. First person to email us, the answer will win Vision Quest uh, West Coast Avengers trade. Boom. Yay. Done. Done. Love it. I love a good spontaneous contest. <laughs> I love it. Um,. I'm really excited for the finale and to see what they're going to do like, with what we just talked about. Life, Me too. But also, it would it would be a waste of Paul Bettany not to bring. That's him the back. only reason I think like they 
would want to bring him back because other than that, it's like, oh God, Wanda's like a fucking, like you've kicked her so many times yeah. when she's down. Um, I, I don't know if I want to ask the next question because I, I, unless you want to talk about it, about uh, how last week it was all, it was me, it was Agatha, blah, 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 blah. To be fair, in the song, when she's saying, when it's Agatha all along, they're talking about who's been messing up everything the messing whole way. Up. It's been Agatha all along. But this episode did definitively show that it was Wanda in a huge moment of grief who has created this entire illusion. Boom. Well, yeah. So, yes. But we knew that before the show came No, out. but we kept on thinking that it could be, it could have been Agatha doing it There are still too, right? other forces at yes. play with magic involved. Um, okay, let's talk about what you just mentioned because I'm excited about it. Uh, and Matt, you and I both said that the moment was a little bit forced. That being said, I still like that she finally is officially the Scarlet Witch. She got the moniker. Um, Agatha tells her that she, th like this whole illusion, everything she's doing is using chaos magic. Now, that excites me because the last time I heard chaos magic was in season six of Buffy when Willow goes all dark fucking evil and she goes dark oh, Venus slash dark and, Scarlet Witch okay. slash dark lady with red fucking hair and fucking fillets people. Um, oh, that's yeah. I, so, so something Forward about now. something about this whole thing with Agatha, though, that I kind of was like, wait a minute, is when she's like trying to do this whole thing about like, you know, Wanda's powers and everything. Wanda has been known in the world for for years like she, she's been in videos of her like do, using her abilities agatha has never seen this no she's seen it but she 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 was waiting for wanda she says in the episode she was waiting for wanda to do something bigger with than just throwing around magic but she basically agatha got impatient and then when wanda did this this was finally like the oh okay and yeah but the thing I, is though she does she makes it a point to say like oh you can do magic without like with like just out of thin air which once again she's doing it all the time with her she's not like using spells or anything like that once again this is all in video it's not like something that it was like oh wow it's I it's, will say the MCU isn't always the best for continuity yes. first of all um second <laughs> I of all, want my continuity <laughs> it definitely was like uh, it definitely was the fact that she was aware of her existence. Like, she's aware of the Avengers and stuff, obviously, because she even tells Vision when she's pretending to just be Agnes, like, you died, you're in the Avengers, blah, blah, blah. Like, she's been aware of them for a while. But we even saw, like, until, like, Endgame, she didn't even manifest that much, like, crazy magic. And, like, as soon as she did, Thanos, like, oh, I'll just fucking blow up all my people and, like, stop her from doing what she's going to do. Like, so we haven't seen the extent. Yeah, because they said that. It was normal, like... Magic you'd expect from people that just know magic. And then, like, the hexes, as she says, just the normal, like, spells and hexes, she wasn't doing anything altering reality or anything on such a scale that it, like, literally alerted her senses as a magic user. And that's what, like, Agatha is implying is she's like, when you created, like, what, is it Westview? Westview. Yeah. I always want to say Westfield. What the fuck is wrong with me? <laughs> when she created Westview, like, that huge surge was like what she felt where she's like, okay, what's going on here? Who's this? Because as I mentioned the previous episode, remember how, I, how you were talking about her quote lair um, and all it's these different things. It's still a fucking lair. <laughs> she said, even called on. the lair in this episode. And I said, oh my and I, God. Hold on. And I said that it, it was, they hinted a lot at the whole nexus. She, especially in this scene where she gives her like the Scarlet Witch moniker, she's talking about her being a nexus being, like this super powerful magic being. The only thing that annoys me about this episode is that they keep pushing away further and further from her mutant lineage. And maybe they're doing that because they're going to bring about the, you know, X-Men and mutants in a different way in the MCU and they're not sure yet or whatever. But like the fact that they officially were like, yeah, Pikachu is just one of my illusions. Like I was talking as him the whole time, like blah, 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 which I said could have been a possibility earlier on the show. Like everybody got so excited when he appeared and they're like, that's it. This is officially the mutants crossing over, whether he's pulled from another reality or like what's going on. And it's just, it's a little sad to be like, yeah, that wasn't mutants officially entering the MCU. We still have yet to see that. That's not happening yet. And I was hoping that Agatha would say like, like you are a mutant or a mutate and like that was your latent abilities, but then there's something more on top of that. But she, she's not saying it. She's just like, you are this, this theorized, like, whatever prof Legend. prophesized yeah, being yeah, you are yeah. the scarlet witch you are what has been prophesized for so long so i feel like she's talking about like that fact that there's only specific nexus beings that exist 
and can like tap into the fact that there's all this interconnected magic in the world. The fact that Doctor Strange also hasn't really said anything about her in the past also shows you that he is going to be the Sorcerer Supreme. Like our version, the modern one. Mm. And he even doesn't know enough to be like, oh, Scarlet Witch or like whatever. Fucking Wanda. Wanda. <laughs> Sorry, now I want to always call her Scarlet Witch. He's, he's not even like Wanda. What's going on with her? Like he like they don't really interact yet until like phase four is going to happen, even with Endgame and everything, because people poof away. It happens. But on top of that, like he has to have known about some sort of existence having once again, people saw a video. She's the reason a lot of shit happens. Yeah. That tear the Avengers different ways, and that even happens in the comics. But this storyline, Vision Quest, it leads to Avengers disassembling, like people are pulling sides, like a bunch of different things occur because she starts going a little dark. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, chaos magic. <laughs> I'm trying to, like, segue here. <sighs> Good times. So, I did like that Agatha did mention chaos magic on top of that because this is something that makes Wanda so unique, in the, even in the comics. Like, apart from other magic users, because there's always, like, 80 different magic users, no matter what comics you're reading, DC, whatever. And people pull magic in different ways. So, um, Wanda, they've always referred to her stuff as hexes and like been like, eh, she's kind of got like a witchy sort of thing. Um, but the fact that chaos magic was mentioned shows me that she knows that she was touched by this other entity. Or there's like a different level of magic, so you can explain that um, not everybody would be able to do chaos magic. Because the reason why it's, quote, chaos or chaotic is because you're messing with reality. So you're either altering reality or you know, like uh, manifesting things out of nowhere. So that's the thing. She was like, your little hexes were cute. I can do little hexes. Like I can do magic, whatever. I don't need my book just to do it. And she's like, but then you're doing on a large scale, altering all this reality. And she's like, you, this is not normal. I am, I've existed for so long and I am this powerful, but you are, she doesn't want to tell her she's more powerful than her, but she's like, you are the Scarlet Witch. Like what mm. the fuck? And that's why the whole episode, she's going into her past and having her confront her trauma, which she was been slowly doing throughout the series regardless with like why she killed Sparky and all these other things. But to have her literally, she's like, no, no. This is your turn to enter. You are walking into the scene. You are playing this out. I'm watching your past because I want to see exactly why and how you are this powerful. And Wanda's not picking up on it because she's so focused on like what's happening. All of a sudden, she's a kid again. She's watching stuff. She drags her out from the bed and she's like, how long were you trapped yeah. for really? And she's like, two, two days because it never went off. And she's like, yeah, it never went off because you did something. You used probability magic. You used a probability hex, and the probability turned out well, which is something she does in the comics. She has probability magic. And then she's just like, but how long were you really trapped for? Because she's reinforcing all these things in her life with these lies. Because of the trauma, she wants to cover it up and be like, this is what happened. My brother and I you know, were trapped for so long, and we're just lucky it didn't go off. But that's why we hate the Stark so much, because we just had to stare at that bomb. And yeah. she's like... You literally could have been stuck under there for 30 minutes. You did your magic. You guys realized it didn't work, and then you left. So she's like, how, like, you need to face these things. So as she goes through every single tier of, like, what happened and how, and you even see when she comes into contact with the Mind Stone and she has that, you know, moment where she sees clearly, like, this vision literally of, like, future her or alternate universe her, whatever people want to say it is. Like, she sees the Scarlet Witch. She sees that innate thing inside of her that she's going to be. And then the other guys, they don't see anything on the footage. It gets blipped out because that's already her, even in that split second, altering reality. Mm. So they don't see what happened. I yeah. didn't think about that. Well, because it, it's the exact same cut they've been doing in the show yeah. anytime <clears throat> reality is altered or you something happens magically that stops you from seeing it. That's why I kept saying that like Agatha or Agnes was Agatha because a lot of interactions, boop, blip, like coming yeah. to the car to see her. Something happened there we didn't see or they didn't want us to see. Some magic user didn't want us. Pietro, same thing. It, it blipped because she was pretending to be Pietro, was trying to do this back and forth, and then, like, Wanda was catching on. So, blip, it happens. Anyway, uh, chaos magic is awesome, and depending on how they do it, I just hope that they still connect her to being a mutant. I'd be very sad if the MCU just makes her... Like, yes, she is a supreme magical being, but I also want her to be an Omega-level mutant because mm -hmm. these two things together are what make her so powerful. The fact that the Chaos God touched her, she was birthed in the specific place where the Chaos God was, like, kept. Yeah. 
Well, we could still. Anyway, I mean, we'll we see. could still see. We could still see that happen next week. Like, sorry for the, yeah. rant. <laughs> no, it's okay. Like something, something could still be said to make that happen. There's a lot that can. I think the finale. It better be mind blowing. Like, yeah. I just hope. I I hope it's good because this just felt like more setup. I was like, ooh. Yeah. Ooh. We'll see. Um, I kind of ran out of time. I'm just gonna say this, and we don't really need to talk about it. I'm I'm a little bit annoyed that first shield like was actually Hydra and now sword are kind of douchebag assholes. I, too. I will I will kind of rant about that slightly. I'm actually kind of tired of that trope of like yeah, government same. aid. I actually would have preferred it if they had if you if you they'd established like look they they're just they're scared if like the director had been as he kind of said in the one episode like you didn't know what it was like where he could yeah. have said like this could happen again like her abilities she could snap people out of existence yeah. or something like we will not let that happen again. Because then that would make them a little sympathetic rather than like, <laughs> no, this dude's just an we asshole and using Wanda like yeah, and doing and that, shady shit behind the scenes. And I'm like, enough, 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 like, enough. He was like, I enough. put together an android yeah. of stealing her magic. And I was like, mm. I just don't care for that character. I don't care for the character and with. I don't care for the trope. Like I would like for once, and I know in the comics, a lot of the comics I've read, S.H.I.E.L.D. has gone from being good trophy. to bad to good to bad to good to bad to good to bad. But like, we just have sword be good no, we my, have them be good please. i mean more i could see the ending of this be the director gets killed or he gets rem- and monica becomes, monica director, becomes yeah. the yeah. head of sword That'd and, be great. So. Yeah. the one thing that I, I i did like was when she shows up and how patient she was trying to be and she's like the super powered person like but even on top of that she didn't do a crazy magic we see her do now nope. so it was still her being like so hold yeah. up but like that she comes in and sees his body and then moves on, and you're like, I had a feeling she wouldn't steal his body. She yeah. wouldn't fucking play puppet with the person she loves. And then you know he doctored that footage oh, to show yeah. everybody to be like, this is what she does. She breaks. Yeah, she did break the fucking glass, but mm. if that's all she never did, trust. Though, that's all she did. Dudes like that guy. Let's give our rating out of five hex spells of chaos magic. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, I'll go four. Four out of five. I'm also going to give it a four out of five. It wasn't, it was the episode that I wanted for Wanda and the show has needed. And I'm like, this is what the show is going to do at some point. She has to tackle yeah. these traumas. It was done really well. That being said, it didn't hit me like a fucking Agatha all along last week. Like I was fucking over the moon. I was like, good luck <laughs> topping me now. Like, all the memes is, that have come out of that now. Like, and I wrote Game of Thrones season eight, eight too. <laughs> oh, so oh good. my god, so memeable. This one was just like the episode that was needed. You're like, oh, the groundwork is laid. <laughs> I'm I'm for once going higher than you guys. I'm giving it a four point five out of five. Ooh, I ooh, really ooh. liked no. all the flashbacks a lot. Uh, I like the way this episode was filmed. I like how it even more interconnects the MCU. And I feel like my car knew that we were going to be talking about this because that interconnected the episode and put on the scene where Wanda has to kill Vision, the music. And I was like, I'm going to cry. Uh, 4.5 <laughs> out I like that she five. shows up to the house and it's not even built yet. It's just this plot. He Dude, bought I, and you're like, I, fuck. Well, well. I, pick, I picture Vision like, you know, like, uh, excuse me, Mr. Vision. What is, like, in order to get a home loan to buy this property, what is your, oh, I work for the Avengers. Okay, great. What is your income on that? <laughs> Can we give a shout out to the fact that they showed the Jersey Turnpike for, like, half a second, and yeah. it, they showed the fucking Trenton, like, Lambertville, whatever, exit, yeah. and I was like, oh, I've been there. I've driven past that. <laughs> I was just like, really, I feel like we're in Jersey. Um, <laughs> Next week, next week, That's just cool. to give everybody an idea, I think what we're going to do is where it'll be a, a free bonus spot. It won't be a patron exclusive, but next week we'll probably record a, um, a special for the WandaVision um, a very, finale a very special along with our main episode. We'll Cause I think, I think we're going to need an episode yeah, probably. Just, just to, to talk like about the, the entire show. So I'll look for two episodes next week for WandaVision's season finale. It's going to be fun. Oh dear. Oh dear. Let's move on to Snow piercer. Attention, snow piercer passengers. Uh, this episode was called "Keep Hope Alive," and Matt, we'll start with you. What did you think about this episode? It's, I mean, it was, it was, a, it, I was better than last week's episode. I did, and I think we we were talking about this before we recorded. I did like once again, kind of building up icy Bob a little bit, you know, that he's not just the dumb brute or anything, which obviously they did the first time you ever saw him when he was like, fuck you. <laughs> but, you know, I know what you love that part. I, I liked it. You know, once again, I'm, I'm still not a huge fan of Wilfred and, um, and Audrey's oh, yeah. scenes, Audrey's thing. Cause I'm kind of like, eh, it doesn't, it doesn't jive with me. 
I, and I and I can't quite put my finger on why. Because it's abusive, and you're like, get out of there, girl. Well, that that too, but I I don't know. I just don't feel the chemistry. I I, I just I don't know if it's an actor thing or a writing thing. I just I just don't feel it personally. I'm with you. I don't buy the love. I don't buy the obsessiveness on Wilford's part. It, it's um if they wanted to like really make this seem pretty fucked up, they would have continued with some of the stuff that they showed last week. Um. She seemed like pretty nonchalant, like being in his train. Like she wasn't acting very scared, um, especially that she's like trying to commit sabotage yeah. so they can hear what I he's just, saying. I didn't, the, I didn't buy it this week. Yeah, because you you think she'd be more terrified yes, about like going exactly. onto the train and being in, in his power, you know? Yeah. Completely. I think in front of him, she can't show that she's terrified, or else he'll be like, "Why are you here?" Then like. Well, the, but the thing is, though, is that also he he knows she what she was trying to do because he saw it, and you think that at that moment he would be like, "You've betrayed me." All. Do you think that she knew? Do you think he knew? No, he did because he because well, he looked at it and touched she, it. Yeah, yeah, because she was like because oh. like they said like the thing she has to because she couldn't that. get the knob back on or whatever it was, and she's like shit, and she like mm-hmm. pockets it because then Wilford walks over and he kind of like looks right at it and he kind of you kind of see him like kind of touching it. And that's why he was like, do you want to, like, you should stay tonight in the car or whatever. Like, that's why I'm worried she's going to end up dead because he's like, yeah, you fucking betrayed me. You're going to yeah. die again. Like, also, also one thing as, as well about this episode is, and I know I'm kind of jumping around. Oh, it's okay. I'm jumping to the end here is who the fuck was killed? Because I was kind of like. It was the Brakeman. The Brakeman. Was it the Brakeman? It okay. Because that's what I was wondering. I'm like, who the fuck are these people that just got killed? Because I was like, am I missing a character death that I wasn't sure? About? No, it was the Brakeman. And I thought that that was poorly executed as well. The, the thing I also thought immediately is that they are, they are starting to take a few too many things from Battlestar and filming things like Battlestar. And I love Battlestar. Like, it's probably in my top five favorite TV shows ever. But there's, there's showing like, what what am I trying to say? There's like you're trying to like honor something and like you know make your show like it. But th- yeah, yeah. But this is like I feel like straight up getting like to a point of like kind of copying it, and I I'm not in love with that. Um, I, I I also I did kind of like, but also didn't like the whole thing with um who was the character the the the, the janitor smuggler guy? Who was his character? Oh Oz. Oh yeah. This this is this is the this is the the shit that really pissed me off about this episode. This came out of came right out of the episode of Battlestar Black Market. The episode is literally called Black Market, <laughs> where Adam was like, Lee, you need to go over to the Black Market ship. Shit's going down. Like we're not getting medicine. You need to get that shit under control and find out like there's a whole prostitution ring going and it's just like insane and drugs are being, you know, sold for a stupid price when there's basically like no currency left in the world. And Lee, I'm, I'm going to spoil this for you. I'm sorry. Um, even though I do want you to show, watch the show one day, Lee goes over there and confronts the head of the black market. And he's like, you need to get this shit under control if you don't like we're gonna we're gonna take control of the black market and there just won't be a black market anymore because both him and him and uh president roslin both agree there needs to be a black market but if they can't get it under control then they're just gonna put it under military and political control and the dude's like no this is my home i ha- i have all the power here and lee shoots him in the head <laughs> plain okay. and simple Shoots him in the head, and this is exactly what happened in this episode, dude. Well, well, well Pike. Gun. I think. Yes. I think. I think Pike is the is Stephen Ox character's name. I think. Yeah. I think it's oh, Pike. Yeah. yeah, Pike. I was thinking the, you meant like the actual janitor dude who used to be an officer. I was like, oh, Oz. But oh no, no, no. See, and I thought yeah, you were bad. talking about the head of the black market. The head of the here. black market. Yeah. yeah. What's a? Uh, God, I can't remember characters. his name right now. It's, yeah. it's well, it doesn't matter. Me. He's dead. He's dead. Well, but because like basically, and I do kind of like the idea that Layton sent Pike to assassinate him because he's yeah. like, we can't let him like control us or blackmail us and blah 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 and then you know the kind of the whole thing where he's just like look i'll, I'll be quiet i won't say it. and he kills him and he's like i'll too too late and he kills yeah. him anyway i i liked the idea of that i just didn't i wasn't a huge fan of the execution it of it seems <laughs> very uh, every oh boy everything about that scene felt very forced and very lifted from like i i got so many battle star vibes from this and that's in this situation not a good thing this is i'm gonna say this is actually probably my least favorite episode of snowpiercer so far hmm. um, see without jennifer connelly it all crumbles down the back. <laughs> it's true though it's true <laughs> jennifer we miss you come back uh, 
I, I don't like, I'm just going to say, I don't like the arc with, I don't even remember her name because I thought she was dead and I wrote her out of my head. Oh, Josie. Josie being back. I just think it's dumb. Josie. Um, I, I, I actually kind of like that a little bit because yeah. once again, like it kind of d- does that connection with Icy Bob and like she and Bob seem to have that connection where obviously she's mm-hmm. kind of fucked up kind of like yeah. he is and he basically, you can tell he kind of pities her yeah, because he could have turned her in when he found out that she was passing messages down the train and he's just like, I hope you know what you're doing and just walks away the last thing i'll say and Brittany's probably gonna slap me for saying this but oh <laughs> i uh I'm, I'm really tired of uh till being a hot mess like every episode of the season she has just been like look at this fucking evil no 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 like, no i don't i no. i agree like she'll, she'll get her shit back together but, but like it, it's, it's gotten to it. a point where it's like okay we get it she has issues she has ptsd like Discovery season three dealt with this this season with Detmer mm-hmm. and they did it so much better than how Snowpierce is dealing with it. She just seems like she just seems like she's being emo where Detmer like actually like showed like all these actual symptoms of PTSD where it's like, oh, uh, Till's fucked. So we're going to see her fuck someone and we're going to see her spar with someone. And it's just like, I, I don't like it. I don't like it. Anyway, my rant's over. <laughs> <laughs> She was trying to have the best of both worlds. <laughs> Wait till she gets better. Um, I think the main difference between those two things is that Discovery, it's an idyllic future where they have access to things that will help them cope with PTSD and, you know, doctors. <laughs> this one, they're on a fucking train with the worst of humanity and she is That's true. gay going through it and she was like, fuck, I watched a whole car of people like pretty much die and there's this huge icy dude that no cold effects. What the fuck is going on? Um, yeah, I like that she eventually sparred just to like get at get yeah. it out because he's like, you basically need to one, take days off, very important self care, guys, and two, find a way to let out this aggression constructively. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I hope she gets better. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> ooh, she's going through it. Um, this episode, so I still liked it. I think it's really, it was a very bold choice for them to go two episodes without focusing on their, like, leads for the show. Because you do have your, like, Wilford moments, obviously. But then the fact that you're not seeing, like... You don't see Leighton a lot. Yeah, you're not yeah. seeing Leighton, you're not seeing Melanie. And it's it's showing, like, hey, this is what all the other characters are going through. And, like, there's still, there's so many different plots and threads and different things that are happening. But we're just going to, like, show a few of those. But I like that it's, like, the one day that best quote, takes a day off. And she's like, no, I really got to figure out, like, who did this or whatever. And that you have, like, the, oh, Wilford's up to something and it involves the Brakeman. But they immediately think, oh, the Brakeman are going to do something bad because they're, like, Wilford supporters. And then it's like, oh, no, it involves the the Brakeman because, like, he's killing them. You're like, oh, shit. Um, I like that it was just out of nowhere because, like, you weren't e- expecting it either. Like, he shows up and he, like, you know, confronts the main Brakeman. But then everybody else gets, like, jumped and killed and you're just like, ah, they did that. They battle started. They did. They did some. Uh, honestly, the what I kind of thought about was like, and you know, this is this is a, a history thing, like Night of the Long Knives from Nazi Germany, where you like one organization just attacked the other and just wiped it out, essentially as a means of control and stuff like that. I actually, I was surprised very much though that at the at the moment at the when there was the choice to be made when uh wilford's like ruth you want to come over oh, and, and yeah. ruth was like oh, oh no i need to stay here sir in order to, yeah you know this thing's going on i can't possibly come over right now yeah, she's like i can't possibly come over right now i was like ruth the baby <laughs> ruth is the best character this season yeah, ruth actually yeah i will admit ruth has probably been the best most rounded character this season i just wrote in all caps <laughs> on my paper <laughs> ruth because if i loved one thing about this episode even more now Ruth just coming into her own and even like not, not falling to, to Leighton's level where Leighton still won't trust her and being like, I'm just going to accept that he doesn't trust me right now. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to continue to prove to him instead of going down that, that, um, fuck him, that character, me. that yeah. character in the middle who then just says, well, fuck it. I'm just going to become a bad guy. She's continuing on becoming a better person and doing She's the like, right I'm thing. I'm doing what's best for the train. And, I love that, and I love her acting, and I love the character so much. And I love talking about good character work real quick. I have to say it before I forget it. When um, when Leighton tells Pike, you got to go kill dude, and Pike really doesn't want to do it, and uh, Leighton like, says, uh, 
Taylor legends live forever. And I'm like, that was bad. That was bad guy Leighton moment right there mm-hmm. because it was manipulation. And I like that we saw a little bit of douchebag Leighton. Yeah. Well, and how, and how having this job is starting. To well, there. Right. Well, because and that's part of the thing is that and that's it's going to be there's going to be that big reveal in a later episode where it's going to be shown that Leighton and them are lying about Melanie getting in contact with them as well as it's going to come out that Leighton basically ordered a hit on, you know, the head of the black market and so on and so forth. And then I, that's where Wilford's probably going to make his move and be like, see, I like he's I'm better than him. Mm-hmm. I would never do such a thing like that. And people have already been questioning Leighton the whole season. So that's like the growing theme of yeah. like first season. Everybody's behind him because they're like, yeah, we're going to overtake the train, whatever. But as soon as Wilford appears, then it's like, can Leighton even lead us? All of a sudden it's martial law. We got to figure out our democracy, democracy later. Now he's making all these choices that leaders make. Um, that being said, I like that. Um, Oh, why can't I think the, the name of the lady he's like currently Zara. in love with? Zara. There we go. Yeah, it's so easy to remember. I don't know why I forgot it. Um, I was just like Josie because she. I guess she was in the episode so much. Um, so the fact that Zara's in hospitality with Ruth and the fact that she even says to her, not even to be there to spy on her or whatever, she said like, oh, Leighton, I can also do that. But legitimately, like, I want to join hospitality. Mm. Why not? She's like, you are a leader on this train. Like, you're going to have to, like, I understand you're making the tough decisions and whatever. She's like, but a white lie to give hope to people, that's what you can bring. Yeah. And she's like, the, the fact that, like, you and Melanie, she didn't know Melanie was lying. Yeah. But, like, Melanie did this for seven years on the train just to make sure things were best for people however she could. Like, she's like, Ruth, you, you got it. You're doing the right thing. So she's like, you know, like, walk with me while I think of what I'm going to say in my head. And when she gives that whole, like speech of like yes she linked up and like this is the hope for the future or whatever like you buy it because she sincerely is like i want there to be hope for this yeah. future and yeah. when she is getting all flustered and like just not talking and like you know when they're just putting the napkins together and she's like yeah melanie's on my mind before she left you had that moment where she's like like thank you engineer we're yeah. waiting for you when you come back it's that like we drop everything i don't care anymore like yeah. I, I genuinely like thank you for doing what you've done yeah. jennifer connelly's so on that. all of our minds oh my god <laughs> <laughs> i was like seriously i ne- like uh, when i saw how this episode was going i was like okay we're not going to see her again but it's going to be like some shit we're like something's going to go wrong before they meet up or when they go back together they're going to be like what happened yeah and it's happening. Speaking of speaking of Melanie, uh, the preview for next week's episode, we're finally getting the episode that we've wanted, right? They did not write Jennifer Connelly off the show that some people were worrying about. I was starting to get a little bit worried. Um, I never doubted. Uh, Brittany never doubted. <laughs> Brittany never. <laughs> her we're going to get, Connelly never we're gonna get that Melanie focus episode and her at this uh, weather station, and I'm stoked for it. But the question that I want to ask you guys, how much setup is too much setup? Because we've had two episodes in a row now of setup, 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 setup. I mean, I would say it depends on how the next episode goes. Now, the funny thing is, since I don't see like the next episode previews is because I buy it through my streaming service, so I don't see any mm-hmm. of that. So I am curious to see how the next episode rolls out. If it's going to be like a Melanie like centric episode, like it's just going to be all Jennifer Connelly, like, you know, you, uh, like sold I'm, 10 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> is she going to let her hair down again? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my yeah, god anyway. i want to see whether she survives on that station jesus <laughs> <laughs> i coughed instead of laughed because that was so brutal oh boy oh. just like the cold oh. um yeah I, I i'm fine with the setup honestly like i can feel how these aren't like it's so hard when you have a season opening that was that good mm-hmm. and you have like these like boom 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 like the show always is hitting and then you have a few episodes where it's like plotting and slower things yeah. like just a slow build slow build but then it's like i don't know they still got me because like even if it's not my favorite episode i'm just like dang where is this going where is the show fucking i can't wait i just want to see what happens because like they went up and they just stabbed all the brickmen so i was like oh sh- well they're not a fucking problem on our list anymore they're fucking dead so like who did it were they still the ones that cut off the finger i want to know See, I'm actually curious now because it seemed like the head of the Reachmen seemed like was kind of like, "What are you? What are you talking well, yeah. about?" Like, because well, he you... wasn't involved. With yeah, and that's and I actually kind of I actually like his character, like, and I I was kind of glad that they didn't make him like an absolute like a villain mm. or something. He's I like, kinda... "Why are you Russian to accuse me?" <laughs> uh, uh, they were just being. <laughs> they were just being like firefighter dicks, you know? They're just like, ooh, whatever, Wolford. Because <laughs> they generally, like, it doesn't affect them what who's in power because they're still essential. They're needed. They're just like, we do our job, whatever. 
So I like, it was like, was it a red herring? Was it not? They still could have done it. Who knows? Indeed. Mm. Well, we are going to obviously find out a lot more next week. Let's get into our Snowpiercer Keep Hope Alive rating out of five. I see bobs. <laughs> My hope is still alive. So I'll give it a four out of five. I thought it was cool to see like all these other things that the minor characters are doing. Oh, God. Why did she just... She, I, I get why she didn't go across back to Snowpiercer, but it's like, girl, you are gonna die. Mm, like, you gotta yeah. be smarter than this. Well, she, well she's, she, trying, she's trying to complete her mission and whatnot, know, not realizing is. that Wilford's on to her. So. But on top of that, it's just like, <laughs> you know who the type of man I mean, he is. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I will kind of... At some point, obviously, he's going to reveal that he knows what she was trying to do. And, I mean, I'm all for Sean Bean being villainously, like... Wait, wait, wait. villainously debonair like i know what you were doing audrey and i very much am disappointed in you like yes sean bean i'm disappointed <laughs> as well um yeah so i'll give it as i, I think as i said i think i liked it better than the last episode but at the same time like the more i kind of reflect on it the more i'm kind of like eh. so i'll probably go i'll probably go three three and a half somewhere in that range mm-hmm um, I'll be the I'll be the bad guy for this one this time. Uh, I'm gonna give it a two point five out of five do, icy do, bobs do, 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 because do, do, do. I think they. <laughs> I was I'm thinking. The bad. Bad. Oh, no, the thing is, I saw both of us pause when you said Duh, the bad guy and we're like singing do, 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 it. Do, 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 do. Okay, Duh. I actually don't like that song. <laughs> yeah, I love that song. I love her. Uh, two point five out of five. I think they took way too much from other source material and or not source material. Julian's other, like plagiarism. Uh, this isn't even a homage it was, anymore. It was a little bit of plagiarism, <laughs> and I'm not too thrilled about it. Uh, two point five out of five. I'm excited. For the return of um, Britney's crush, return week. of the king. So, yes, return of the queen. Return of the queen. Return of the queen. <laughs> yes, um, <laughs> she's fight, she's fighting David Bowie. I just want to. I just, just right. want to see Melon Collie without her. I just <laughs> want to see Britney swoon. Again. <laughs> I hope if it is her, the whole episode, I'll just be like, I'm just you guys, no, now Jennifer Connelly is working down the hallway. No, I'm, pic- I'm picturing I'm picturing Jennifer Connelly running around the weather station. David Bowie just singing to her like, I want you with. <laughs> oh boy! Oh my god. All right, How guys. How can I live within you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> As the world falls oh down. Just, ima- just imagine that. Just like, wow, Snowpiercer went oh, like really <laughs> hard. I do love As the World Falls Down, though. Speak- that song is so fucking Speaking good. of taking from other material. Oh. Uh, dark Falling in love. <laughs> Two hearts beating at the- Oh it's my god. Thing. Okay. <laughs> Guess what guys? Anyway. It's time for Raiders of the Bargain Bed. Dormammu, I've come to bargain. And yeah. bargain we have. I was gonna say if if we wanted to be disappointed, I did scroll past a few rock movies along the way and I was like, nah, we're good. Let's pick something else this time. No, we're. I, I do agree with what Karen said. We should actually go to an actual bargain bin the next time. Just I, for, I think it's yeah. at the point it's that the time we're vaccinated now. It is time. We're gonna reach our hands into that dirty COVID bin. <laughs> just like the box. Mm. No. So this week, Brittany just was like in our chat. Why don't we watch the Book of Life? And we said, why not? And that's what we chose. It is a 20th Century Fox when they still existed animation film and uh people people like this it was in 2014 mm-hmm. uh Guillermo del Toro produced right yeah Not, he didn't del Toro. direct no, no he didn't Guillermo direct. del Toro, Guillermo del Toro. Was yeah was, yeah yes produced yeah. But did not direct uh people really like this movie Rotten Tomato score 83 percent audience 77 percent uh critic so very well received it's very average for something that's not Disney yeah yeah <laughs> well now it's Disney well, yeah. Well, that's the thing. When like I saw everything. it was added, I have words. But I was like, Ugh. but then I was like, yeah, they bought Fox. Never mind. <laughs> but I do remember when Coco was first like shown the trailer for it. I immediately, because I had seen Book of Life beforehand, was like, oh my god, they're ripping off Book of Life. Like I was offended, and I was just like, how dare they? Because I was like, little kid wants to play the it, guitar, goes to the underworld. But they're very different. It's, so I well, yeah, it. <laughs> it is kind of funny because honestly, I didn't realize that these movies had came so far apart because Coco was twenty seventeen, this was twenty fourteen. Because in my head, I thought they had come out around the same time. I know. You know, I wasn't like, because when I, when I kind of d- looked into it, I was like, oh shit, like Coco came out three years after this yeah. movie did. So a lot of the stills from Coco that they showed at first, like the town and different things, people were like, they're just copying Book of Life. Yeah. yeah. But it's different enough. And I love them both for different reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I didn't love this movie. I didn't hate it. I thought it was good. It wasn't great. Um, I, I'm going to I'm gonna go first here because I have very specific complaints about this movie. Woo. And this is what um, companies that aren't Disney do to make their animation not as good as Disney's. And that's um, fail on the music front a little bit. I, I just watched a whole video um, by a YouTuber called Sideways about how music and motifs and and all of this stuff is so so important to to making a movie and why coco for example it's all original songs and um it just it just works and there there are tunes that you're gonna remember where this movie just gets lazy even though give me his full name gustavo does the score for it his score (laughs) is almost I, I actually well, thought the music was like almost does, non-existent in this hold movie. Hold on, hold on. He also does all the songs that they're like the modern songs that are done. He does the instrumentals for all of them and has redone them so that they're Mexicanized. But that's the problem with this too, because yeah. they're not they're not, they're not Mexican songs, songs and they're not original songs and they're them being put in here is just is just lazy. I will and- say watching it now. It's not as fun as when I watched it in 2014. In 2014, these were all the songs that were popular, and it was hilarious. Brittany was like 12 then, so. No, I wasn't. (laughs) I know. (laughs) I was like, how old was I? (laughs) 20, 20, 21, 20, 20. I was 20. Okay. So 12. Um. (laughs) But I will say it doesn't age as well, because I did, I remember enjoying the music a lot more. Like, I had the whole soundtrack on, like, my phone and stuff. so yeah, I I do agree with Julian about the soundtrack. I wasn't there at no point did the soundtrack. I mean, yeah, and I understand songs are popular, but one of the fastest ways to kind of get me to go eh about a lot of movie soundtracks is to do like popular mu- pop music. Well, it's like, I hate it takes you out of what could be a really unique movie otherwise, where they could have written some original. You, yeah, songs. you could you could have had like some like Mexican flavored music. Yeah. and I and I would have loved it, and I do. But yeah. like try to Mexican Mex- is this even a word Mexicanize like the Mumford and Sons like it took me out of the movie. It worked in 2014. I will wait for I did, you. I, love, I still say. love that song though. Like I love Mumford and Sons. I love that song, but it does like that. These pop culture songs, whether it's in this movie, a movie that comes out this year, pop culture songs being in them is going to take me out. It of It dates them. And that's the problem. Cause like Disney movies, because they have original songs, they're always timeless because they're the original songs that fit the movie. But then, like I said, I watch this one, and as I hear it, I'm like, oh, my God, that's Mumford and Sons. I forgot. But the people liked it then because it was like, oh, my God, this is out right now, and this is funny. But you watch it a year later, and you're like, oh, these songs are all from, like, But See, I, I don't think it has anything to do with the year. I really don't because I, I was even, like, listening to the song, and Karen and I looked at each other like, holy shit, that's Mumford and Sons. Oh, we like that song. Oh, wait, why is it in this movie? Like, I don't think it has anything to do with the year. I just I don't like when movies whether it's an action movie or an animated movie like the sing or trolls or whatever take these songs and do different things with them it it just like use write original music pay your 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 composers and your your musical engineers to do something new and unique Mm -hmm. um I agree with that. This is why 20th Century think, Fox got I think bought. it was like a big thing around that time for like a lot of animated films were doing that. Yeah. Aside from like Frozen was the only one that didn't right. at that time. You should watch the Sideways, Sideways video on um, that he does on um, How to Train Your Dragon and how they he says that uh, How to Train Your Dragon is quite possibly has the best opening to a movie because it not only sets up the universe – it sets up the musical motifs that are going to set up the entire franchise and get used for these specific characters in all the right ways. And comparing that to how fucked up the editors and musical engineers screwed up Star Wars music for Rise of Skywalker. Lol. It's a whole thing. I oh boy. agree. Music can make or break a film. And it also helps you with emotional scenes and motifs and like picking up on themes. Because you can watch something without hearing anything and you won't cry but then the next if you watched it with sound then you're like why am i getting emotional i do i I do also one and i I don't know if i want to call it necessarily a strike against this movie or something is that and now here's the thing for example i love brother motherfucking ron perlman and (laughs) but like like the the dude has a voice that that is just awesome like ron perlman has one of the great voices but also at the same time a part of me was just like we could you couldn't have like Hispanic actors like play some of these roles. Shannon like Channing Tatum. Tatum. Hold on. I was just going to say, I love that you guys are watching this now. Cause once again, in 2014, 
people didn't care as much. About whitewashing. Like, yeah. yeah. And well, that's the thing. I, now when I'm watching it, I, I joke with my friends about Channing Tatum. We used to go, Joaquin, while going to like dinner after we watched this. Like just as a <laughs> joke, because we we're like, why was Channing Tatum in this movie? But I love that now we get movies like Coco where you have this whole Latin American cast. Ice Cube. You have movies like Black maker. Panther where you're like, wait, nobody had to be white except for the token white guy? This is great. But in 2014, they're like the main characters. Okay, so Zoe Saldana and Diego Luna, we got that. One or two other people, like, yeah, let's sprinkle in a lot of the side people. Are Danny Latino. Trejo, baby. Yeah. But it's also like, who was popular then? Yeah. Who was going to be in this? But like Channing Tatum, they wanted you to feel like he was the guy she wasn't going to end up with. Who better to do it but some douchey white guy? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> like, Yeah. But um, yeah, I will say like Christina Applegate is La Muerte. You're just like, I didn't... Yes, well, that she, was, well, she, no, she was No, she is the tour guide. She's the tour guide. Oh, tour and then guide. The, Never mind. Yeah, the yeah. voice of La Muerte, La Muerte was actually Latina. Yes. Kate yeah, Del sorry, Castillo no, was. Yes. I just forget that the tour guide's like I, the name. I do. And I will say, though, I loved the design and animation of La Muerte. Yes. Like, I loved her. Of both of them. That is the one thing yeah. about this movie that I still love to this day is that other companies, it's unfortunate that Disney just absorbed them again, but Disney has fallen into the same look for like all their 3D animated films mm -hmm. and it like gets exhausting to me as beautiful as they can be the character designs you can just change the eye color and hair for any of their female characters that have come out in the last 10 years and they're the same fucking face like uh, it is atrocious yeah. this one so many different weird shapes sometimes you didn't even like to look at them because you're just like oh that's just like <laughs> that's a weird so looking person <laughs> but like the fact that they went with the fact that she's showing the kids the story through like these wooden puppets, wooden puppets and then yeah. in the movie they're all wooden puppets because of that like it's just it was, they a, have to it was do a unique that? presentation yeah, that's harder to do they did that <laughs> instead of making just like normal people in the in reality but i liked it i like the designs they had a lot of different like architectural designs that you'd see throughout like mexico and uh I mean it's it's cool. it's plainly obvious that when they made Coco this movie definitely influenced it. Oh, there for sure. there is no way that they didn't like take some things from this movie and go, "Oh yeah, we'll This put movie doesn't have Mexican. the emotional pull of Coco? No, it doesn't. But it's just like a fun goofy adventure be movie be for kids. Because it's that it's that trope of, you know, oh, two guys trying to get the girl yeah. and the blah blah blah. I'm not going to lie, the first time I saw this, I thought she in the end was going to be like, "None of you guys asked yes, me if I was interested too. in you." Yeah. That's the only Thing that I to the end don't like about this movie as much as I like the main character Manolo. I was in my friend's <laughs> phone. I was in my friend's phone as Manolo because like I always just sing and do weird shit. So I was just like, and that motherfucker would not stop his singing. He wouldn't shut up for one fucking second. <laughs> <laughs> one thing that this movie did so beautifully, along with Coco, I have to put them into the same conversation because both did so well was give us some of the most beautiful visuals you've ever seen for a fictional place or, you know, or, you know, a mystical place in, you know, the land of the dead, you know? I agree. It, the petals. Yeah. It, it was just so freaking cool. And both movies do it so well and make the area so much fun for the scenes that are there. Like the best part of this movie was when he's down in the land of the dead oh, yeah. trying to get back. Mm -hmm. And it was the same thing in I Coco. I almost didn't want him to come back. I mean, I to be like, fair, the whole movie, boy. the whole, the whole, all of Coco is basically in the land of the dead, yeah. but uh, both do it so well. And this one, I don't know. I almost give the edge to this one. It was so beautiful. Like you said, with the petals, mm -hmm. everything they did with the bulls coming together and the fire. And um, I will say it was like mind blowing for 2014. Yeah. I know looking back on it now, you're like, well, Coco has like the visual edge because of like, it's more recent but, technology, but, but also, but also Coco probably had way more money behind oh. it in order yeah. to, you know, but at the same time, like you watch this movie on on a good TV, like the TVs that are mm -hmm. out now, like it looks freaking beautiful. Nice. Like this movie mm -hmm. looked so good. And I like that because like Day of the Dead and stuff, like they really, I think they capture culture really well without making fun of the culture. Like you can have goofy, funny characters, but like showing that the land of the dead is like this celebration place, especially celebration because of, the Day of, the of dead, life and death. They, yeah, they celebrate the life and death of the people they're remembering. Like it's not weird and. I don't know. I just like how th how they always make it like, oh, it's like this cool party and it's all colorful and here's all these different things that you learn about. The little paper cutouts that they have everywhere with names I'm forgetting right mm -hmm. now. No, I know what you're talking about, though. Yeah, they had those in Coco, too. The, ca like the, the Calaveras. Calaveras? Those are the skeletons, I don't know. No. 
Okay. I'm just trying to think of it. The other thing I really liked was uh, some, sometimes the uh, like these big end battles can be very generic in these kind of movies. But I thought this one was really unique, like with the dude's arms, like who could like stretch out. And I I, I loved <laughs> yeah. when he's like making his final stand and he just he lights all the bombs on him. Oh my God, I don't yeah. know. I love that for some reason. Well, he's just like then I'm gonna blow up the whole town because yeah. you don't expect it. No, I just yeah. I thought that was so clever. Do you also like that the the two guys stop fighting each other and they realize they're all friends? Like that's the one thing. Yes. Like they were rivals yeah. for her affection. Yes. But in the end, he literally was like threw the pin at him to keep him alive. Like, yeah, I, I actually, I, I don't think there was ever. I mean, I'd, I, I'd have to, I'd have to watch the movie again. I, I watched it while I was at work, so I wasn't able to pay all the attention to it. But I don't think that there was ever the moment where they hated each other. Oh no, they didn't. there was no. like there was a, there was just the moment when he was just like you know, man, what did you do when she was quote dead? Mm-hmm. And stuff like that, but other, but I mean, that was just came from a place of grief. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't the the anger scene between the two friends. Where it was oh, like, yeah. I hate you. Well, I hate you too. And because so if that had happened, I would have been like, God damn it! Yeah, it's a, like a nice competitive rivalry. Yeah, yeah. For for a so for a woman who could yeah. make her own. I don't story. know. Oh, well, God. I thought it was so funny because she's like, I learned how to fence. I learned how to do these things, and I'm just like, Are you a lesbian? Like I was just <laughs> waiting for it. Like in college, this was oh 2014. Seven years ago. I know. I'm just trying to think. This is pre. You're, you're me 20, coming you, out. You're about to say you're, you would have been it's twenty twenty one. I think you said a little bit pre me coming out, but like it's definitely around the time like that Legend of Korra finale hit, and I was like, oof, <laughs> you know. And then I was like, I think I can talk about this now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was right before that, and I was just like, ah, she just didn't feel straight to me. But that's okay. We'll allow it for the kids because it taught them a wholesome message. I only get a little teary at the end where I'm just like, yeah, write your own story. <laughs> um, but Coco, meanwhile, I'm just like, it's two thirds of the way through and I'm like drenching yeah. my fucking shirt. Let, let's let's talk about Coco and the comparisons Coco. to that movie. Obviously, do you, do you guys think that they deserve to be compared to each other? Do you think that this, that Coco purposely took a little bit from, I mean, from Book of Life? Well the, or- thing, well, the thing is though, is that it's both movies obviously are heavily influenced by Mexican culture and the day, and the day, the, of, the the day, day of the dead day. and all that stuff like that. So, I wouldn't say they took from each other, and honestly, now I do think that a little, at least some of the art style and design. Yes, Coco definitely took from Book of Life, but once again, Book of Life just presented itself as like their wooden puppets, essentially, and blah blah blah. So you see that while Coco did more of like the skeleton, mm-hmm. the calaveras, and stuff like yeah. that. So I mean, there's there's too many similarities for you to not compare them to some degree, but. If if all you're gonna do is like say, well, Coco is the better looking movie, blah blah blah, then you're not really do you're not do you're not doing Book of Life a, a service, right? Like you're not you're not being fair about it. I, you know, it's really funny. I think I started this conversation by saying like I didn't love this movie, mm-hmm. but I think as like we talk about it more, I think if I was to go back and watch it, I'd probably like it a lot more and maybe even love it because like. Yeah. Because you were focused, first of all, it's a bargain bin, so right away you're like, I got to be critical. Yeah, <laughs> but no, I actually think I yeah. really enjoyed this movie. Yeah, it's yeah. one that like. Like I said, I watched it one time in 2014 when it came out illegally on my laptop. Um, joked about it with friends. We would, like sing the songs from it and just do goofy shit. And then literally haven't seen it in seven years. That's why when I saw it pop up, I was like, oh, yeah, isn't this the guy that like wants to play music instead of be a bullfighter? But I didn't remember most of the other plot. I was like, Channing Tatum's the other guy, the Joaquin. And I was like, fuck, why can't I remember this movie? <laughs> so like, that's why I was like, let's watch it. Yeah. And I did. And I was like, I do remember this <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, anything else to add on the Book of Life? No. I think that people who already like Coco, for example, and maybe haven't seen this, should go and give it a watch anyway. It's on Disney+. Just to Plus. see, yeah. Like, if you already like stuff about Day of the Dead or you want to learn more, this is, like, a different part of more of the culture and, like, stories. Like, you don't really see, like, Jabalba and La Muerte. Like you, yeah. you just see Coco yeah. go to the af- the afterlife and then come I'm back. A horrible human being. Every time I heard Shibulba, I was like Sibulba. Yeah, Sibulba always. Wins. Every time <laughs> I did that too. It's like Shibulba, and I'm like Shibulba. I was the only one who kind of thought that. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's probably where. Let's be honest. Star Wars names aren't the most uh, uh, no. unique or well Definitely. thought out. So Definitely they probably not. were like Shibulba, no. Shibulba. I can't wait for next December when we go back and do our two year uh, Rise of Skywalker. Uh, Retro, gorgeous retro. Oh, oh my it's, god! It's, it's gonna be, oh it's god. gonna be a roast. I don't want to do it. It's gonna be a roast. <laughs> I don't even. I don't want to watch gonna Rise be, of Skywalker again. That roast is gonna be as crispy as a uh, Uncle Owen Aunt Beru. <sighs> it deserves it. Just be, or maybe get... half three fourths of Anakin. Yeah. Yeah. 
We'll figure it out when we get to it. Let's get to the bargain bin meter score. Matt, this is your baby as always, so go ahead and go first. So I will give it a best buy. So because the movie deserves to be remembered on its own merits, it it's definitely worth a watch as someone who didn't experience it in 2014. I remember I and like I've always seen it like, no, like you sh- remember seeing like a commercial for it. Yeah, I've, I saw a commercial for it and I've always seen it in like a bargain bin and stuff like that and I just haven't really I was kind of like eh whatever, but I'm glad I watched it. I'm glad I, you know, I and I, I give the man credit, Guillermo del Toro, even though he didn't direct it, he obviously probably heavily influenced its style and whatnot. And I give the man a ton of credit. He has a, a bunch of imagination because how many people making a movie would be like, oh, no, make them like wooden puppets instead of just like mm-hmm. characters like that you're used yeah. to seeing running around. Just just uh, real quick, uh, for those that don't know, this movie was directed by Jorge R. R. Gutierrez. He was credited as... as George R. Gutierrez. Hmm. So, yes. George R. R. Gutierrez. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> George, are you Gutier- Gutierrez? Good old Jorge. Um, Brittany. I'd also give it Best Buy because if I saw this at Best Buy and it was, you know, either in their whatever bin or actually I might already own it. But if I didn't already own this movie, <laughs> like I was just trying to think of it. I was like, did I end up buying it? I don't know. I think I bought it and like just put it in like our kids' pile yeah. for when my cousins come over, but I have yet to rewatch. Either way, I'd buy it for whatever price is on there because I'm like, this movie's fun. Yeah, so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Best Buy with the catch. One of the reasons is because my kid absolutely loved this movie. Like Cecily adored it. She was having so much fun. <laughs> yes. And uh, if I saw it either in the Best Buy bargain bin or even on the steel book shelf, if there was a steel book for it, and it was on sale, I would buy it. Nice. So Best Buy. It's a steal. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that does it for this edition of Raiders of the Bargain Bin. We'll be back next month, and I think we will finally go back to the bargain bins. Yes. And yes, we got to pull out the real shitty ones yeah. for you guys again. Oh, oh, God. We Another had two good request. ones in a row. Yeah. Another friend request Jesus. or something. Oh, nice. God. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that one in Velocipass. Robin, Robin Hood. Hood. It was on TV Robin the other Hood. day, and I wanted to scream. Um, Gods, of not Egypt. Deserve, Gods of Egypt. Oh, oh Jesus. No. Talk about whitewash. I'm so sad. <laughs> I hate that even the only scene my brain didn't hurt for that movie was when Chadwick appeared, and then I was like, "Why did they do this to Chad? Why?" <laughs> Chadwick, Chadwick needed what a paycheck. Did they do man. To my baby? Yeah, no, what did they do to my boy? <laughs> oh God! All right, guys, that's going to do it for this edition of Everything Is Permitted. Next week, again, just to remind you, we will be doing Snowpiercer and our review of Raya and the Last Dragon. So oh, yes. uh, that's going to be exciting as well. We'll have that for you. That's on Disney uh, Plus Premiere Access. So we'll have that for you. And then a special bonus episode reviewing the full season of WandaVision and its finale. So stay tuned for that. That'll be episode 91. I say to you, see you next week and have a good night. You can find Everything is Permitted on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and YouTube. Everything is Permitted is produced by Rob Migliaccio, Nikki Vizi, and Geneva Stein Shivers. Our executive producers are Michael Cox, Brittany Tomes and the Tomes family, and Julian Brown.